The mainstream media has been thrown in a tailspin after an independent trader told the BBC how the world of big money and politics looks from the inside. In our report from Washington, we take a look at why this was such an eye-opener for many. The governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world. It was the comment heard round the world, one that generated widespread reaction from papers and pundits alike. We appreciate your candor, however, it doesn't help the rest of us, does it? But instead of talking about the comment itself, most outlets immediately sought to shoot the messenger, Alessio Rastani. Forbes called him a psychopath. CNBC suggests it might be a hoax. New York Magazine wonders if it is a hoax or perhaps our worst nightmare. Well, regardless of Rastani's intentions, the bigger question has been largely ignored. Was he wrong about the power of Goldman Sachs? And why was everyone so shocked? After all, right here at RT, in our studios, we've had several guests, bona fide traders, even former Goldman Sachs employees who have said the very same thing. Washington is not the biggest player in this. The global bankers are the biggest players, the global hedge fund managers, uh, and that's where the action, that's who's determining the outcome of this, not, uh, not the players in Washington. They have already ceded control to the global banking industry. Wall Street has been pulling the strings in Washington um, from the get-go. It is the largest um, sector of campaign contributions, and that's to both parties. But for the mainstream media who don't air views like these, Rastani's honesty was unexpected, uh, says Survive um, and Thrive TV's George Heminger. Personally. When they asked him these questions on BBC, he just let it all hang out and the actual truth came across. Rastani also sent shockwaves around the world when he told the BBC that most traders don't really care if and when the economy is fixed. Personally, I've been dreaming of this moment for three years. Uh, I, I, I had a confession, which is, uh, I go to bed every night, I dream of another recession. The BBC interview has now gone viral. If you could see the people around me, jaws have collectively dropped at what you've just said. Perhaps their jaws wouldn't have dropped had they only read Matt Taibbi's July 2009 Rolling Stone article, The Great American Bubble Machine. In it, he famously described Goldman Sachs as a, quote, great vampire squid wrapped around the face of humanity, relentlessly jamming its blood funnel into anything that smells like money. Taibbi discussed with us recently how, although people are unaware of it, the big bank has profound power in society. How much are you paying for gas? How much are you paying for electricity? How much are you paying for your credit cards, um, your mortgages? Uh, how much are you paying in taxes? And how much your, of your tax dollars are going to debt service? That is what democracy looks like! Unlike the mainstream media, few here would be shocked by Rastani's comments. We're gonna shut down Wall Street! For nearly two weeks, these protesters have been out every day, hoping to bring an end, or at least awareness, to what many call a corrupt system. What do we want? Revolution! When do we want it? Now! And still others have argued for years that the government's actions are dictated by the big banks. The very special interest in, on Wall Street, uh, the insurance industry, uh, these, got, these are the people who are writing the laws that Obama is passing. They are keeping him in power. They're the ones that have financed his campaign, and, and, and the laws are being written for their benefit. Bull streets, our streets! As anger builds here, perhaps better questions need to be asked here, so that a different message is sent to decision makers here. That the system that has been sustained and protected for decades might need to change. In Washington, Christine Frizzau, RT.